This is Emmett from Haven for Heroes and Steve from Cyberspace Comics. And we're back again about reading some comics. We thought it would be interesting to start doing a show on what we really love in comics, and that's reading them. Yeah, we... Uh, well, I don't make a living. Steve makes a living out of it. selling comics. Uh, and I do sell comics, and I love it. The reason I love it is because we love comics, man. We really do. So we wanted to go over some... This is the third book we got uh, from Ball. I got from Baltimore that I suggested we read. And if Steve has everything, so uh, <laughs> he was able to read it also. And it is crossover number seven. This is the Sadarsky issue, and I believe he actually also drew the cover. Drew a little Sadarsky uh, on the missing, yeah. missing poster and him running. Uh, crossovers, um, a very interesting book. Uh, have you I, read Crossover before? I have. You I, have, okay. I have read number one, Donny Cates. This was like his big return to indies mm -hmm. after doing Marvel and stuff. And it had a real exciting... There was going to be characters from all different genres, uh, and not only genres, but companies, all stuffed into this image book. Okay. Spawn makes an appearance, um, sort of. Um, if you read some of the earlier issues, you could see a, like hands, weapons of characters from Marvel and DC and... Other just enough image. to not get sued. Just enough to not to get yes. sued. Okay. Exactly. But now we know get, exactly who they're right. They, he did get permission for certain characters to fill to appear completely, though. Okay. Which was cool. From Marvel. Um, was it a Marvel character? I think it might have been Spawn. I think oh, he might have okay. got sure. Well, there's some in this one. Yeah. 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 It, it was fun. It was accessible, which I was surprised at yeah. for a number seven. But so I also didn't in. realize that it was written not by. Donny Cates at first, right? Um, so, which explains maybe why it's it's accessible. Yeah, it's a uh, one and done. Yeah, um, I knew that when I found it. You knew it was one and done. I knew it was a one uh, and done. Okay, gotcha. Because um, a lot of uh, when I got this in, a lot of my customers bought it. I sold out very quickly because uh, it was Chip Sadarsky, and it seemed to be kind of tongue in cheek and kind of fun. Uh, it, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Phil Hester's artwork was functional. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, I'm not amazed at it, As but it's usual. But it's good. <laughs> it's good paneling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not amazing artwork uh, right. from like a art perspective, but from a paneling, it's a, it tells the storyline really well. He is a, that's why he works because he is a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of books he wouldn't get work on because of his quality. Mm -hmm. Like Todd McFarlane would never hire him to draw a spawn book. No. No, but if for a book did, like this, it works. It would pretty, just be to it works really well to make me look wrong. <laughs> Let's find that issue. <laughs> look it up, people. Search Phil Hester Spawn. Let's prove yeah. that it wrong. <laughs> because it, it's just not the style. I mean, Spawn no. has this particular style, but a, a lot of indies can get away with this style. I mean, oh sure, like I said, it's ton. super functional. Well, and the other thing is, is that he t he really is a good storyteller mm -hmm. with his art and. Really, in comics, that's what's more important than... Oh, dude, I would much rather read a good story with bad art yeah. than read a bad story with good art. Of for one, me, but... That's, that's me, but too. There's but there are guys out there that, in just, the comic space that don't read that the words. prefer to just look at the artwork. They just look it's at such the artwork. a versatile medium. It is. It is. And that's why I love it so much, because it connects with so many different people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it... Listen, I, people feel I get a little too mushy and gushy with it, but it... it a lot of, the, especially the stuff from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even the some of the early 90s, there was a lot of good moral stories in it, it you know, about how, you know, you should be a good person for the betterment of the world instead of a shit turd villain. <laughs> that, that's the one thing I actually didn't, I wasn't super into this. There's a lot of cursing in this, yeah. in this issue, and like, but extremely unnecessary cursing. I'm that's, not super into that. That's it's Sebastian. also not a book that you can just hand to anybody and be like oh no. this is an enjoyable comic because it no. was a good read but like that's off-putting to some people yeah it, it doesn't fit everybody's flavor for sure but the story is just the yeah. dialogue like right. could have been altered yeah and still kept the same quality of story he's able to keep himself from doing that for marvel and dc but when he gets an independent yeah, book he it just is, lets it run oh he yeah. lets it fire this is uh almost like a textbook before we talked about you know reading uh, enjoying a single issue right in the last episode this is like a textbook enjoying the issue you have a story that's over and done with and then at the very end which is like perfect for comics there's a cliffhanger that kind of is like oh but come back for an issue eight because there's, you're going to want to know more about it. But it doesn't, it's not a cliffhanger where it ruins the rest of the story. 
and the rest of the story feels incomplete. It's just, it's a good stinger. At the very end, we get a cameo from um, Walker and Pilgrim, right? Yeah. From Powers? From Powers. Yeah. Um, so, and that's the part of the, of the story that's called Crossover, because there's all this other characters and concepts coming together in this book. There they are there. Uh, so this is kind of a textbook for me as a perfect, aside from the language, a right. perfect example of a, a good Old single school, issue comic. Single issue, yes, which is probably why you dug, you dug it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's, the thing is, is that I can tell you I enjoyed it, but it is not memorable. And it's not like, oh, this is iconic story no. of all. This is like, have... I got my money's worth and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it, they don't all have to be iconic. It's they impossible don't. for them no, all to be iconic. It's impossible for all of them to be. But I, if they're a good read, that's really the more concerning part, I think. As long as people get their money's worth, I yeah. think that's, uh, and I think this book is definitely the money's worth uh, to, to read. It's fun. You do not have to know what's going on in Crossover. It's, I had no idea. It's the first book right? I read. And from you the still series. enjoyed it, right? Yeah. So it's, and I, I just love the, the the funniness of the, you know, his missing posters there, and he's running down the snowy road. And Even the construction of the covers uh, is uh, intelligently appealing for me, like because right. the normal creative team is listed up here, uh, and, and since out. this is a this is done by a different artist and writer, they they just crossed out the the previous yeah. creators and filled their name in. Like it's, yeah, I, it's fun. Yeah, it, that's it's very meta though. Like right, oh, I it's feel like meta. if you're not. Uh, maybe that's the one thing I would take against it is that if you're not like already familiar with comics, there's a little bit that you might oh, not yeah, get. You will not get it. Um, yeah, this is not all oh, your first comic. Even that the the character of himself that is coming to attack him is the comic book version of him. Right. And the reason, which is the reason why his coloring is done different than the rest of the book. Yeah. You can see the dotted, old school dotted. Old school dotted. Coloring. Yeah. Uh, which if you're not into old school comics, you don't you even understand even, what that's. Yeah. About. Why why is he done like that? But yeah, if you've seen any Lichtensteins. Yeah. Roy Lichtenstein. Yes. Then you'll know why, because he ripped off comics quite a bit to do his artwork, and um, he, that was what was famous for, that dotted part. A lot of war comics. He took a lot of stuff from war comics. Good book, good read, worth the money. Not iconic, but, man, it's fun. Uh, fun. When you're done, you're like, you one, it, it went by really quick. It did, yep. And I'm a slow, <laughs> I'm a really slow reader. It went by really quick. Uh, and I found it enjoyable. Yeah, it was fun. So what are you doing today? Uh, we're going to do another top five. Okay. Steve's going to show us what he's got. Uh, again, he will not let me know ahead of time. <laughs> we're going to play guessing games. <laughs> and I'm going to look like an idiot. Emmett has no idea about <laughs> comics. I don't I mean, I don't know if it's quite a top five. It's just what's selling. What's selling on a regular. Regularly for me right. with, at somewhat noteworthy prices that I can run by you. And right. that might be different than what you would see in store. Absolutely. So that's all. That's what see what's It's fun what's because we're, like, we have totally different business models, and we're not anywhere close to being direct competition. I no. buy books from Steve, no. and Steve buys books from me. <laughs> yeah, it's actually almost complimentary. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first book is a reprint. Okay, and a reprint a is just like a facsimile reprint? That, yes. Okay. Of a book that Emmett loves. And it's oh. actually on display right behind his oh, yeah. House chiseled of Secrets. physique over yeah. here. <laughs> House of Secrets 92. Yes, but... It's the foil? There's a specific version of it. Not can the foil? You, can you guess which one it is? I'm thinking it's got to be the foil. Everyone no, it's foil. not. It's Beetlejuice! Oh, oh my God! The I didn't appeal, even know they made this. The, so, it, it, again, online it's a whole different world right. than, than in you in-store. Store. Beetlejuice fans don't know this book exists. They don't know to go to, the, to Haven for Heroes at 34 right. Front Street, Port Jervis, New York. Uh, <laughs> they don't know to do that and say, hey, Emmett, I love Beetlejuice. I want to get all these Beetlejuice covers. Right? Yeah. So this comes out. You don't order a ton because people aren't telling you to order a ton of it. And then they figure it out later that it's out. And now it's too late to adjust the print run number. So it's just whatever the print run is, what, right. what it is. So. And then it's hard to get. And every Beetlejuice fan wants one. Yes. Yep. Yeah, but so this is this is kind of fun though. It is fun. It's, no, it's, it's fun. really fun. It's a fun book to do. Yeah. Uh, no, one hundred percent. That's a great idea. You know, so when you ordered them, did was the the photo of it? Yeah. Available. Yeah, this is in. Lunar. A lot of times, I miss out on some of these oddball stuff out because the it's like to be determined. Yes. It's Just a photo, and yeah. I'm like, but also with Lunar, when you're ordering, sorry, Lunar's our distributor. When we're ordering 
you know, upcoming books, they just have a list of what it is. They don't show you the picture. You have to click on each one. Each one to, to see it. To open the picture. And like, that's a lot of books to, yeah. to investigate. And by the time you're at the fourth reprinting of a, or the fourth variant of a reprint, you're like, really, am I going to even be interested? Right. Right. So you might not even open that picture to see I what it is. probably didn't. So uh, I like to look at all of them because I would have gotten at least one of those. I'm looking at it through a different lens than a a brick and mortar store. You know, I know that people are going to be looking for Beetlejuice on online. That's just what it is. Uh, So this book's been going for up to like 13. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Home run. Yeah. Started off a cover. Eventually works up to, you know. It would help me out since I only get 35% off DC books. Yeah, it Yes, it would help uh, increase your margin there, at least. <laughs> uh, the next one is a book that I've been buying out of dollar bins forever, just because I'm like, okay, this character might be popular one day. It's the first appearance. It's not the first appearance of this character, of this name, but right. it's the first appearance of this person as this character. Okay. It's the issue number one of their title. It's a Marvel book, and this time the hero is a female or previously they were male, and uh, famously, the original one was Puerto Rican. Oh, is this the Ghost Rider? The, the no, new no, no, oh. that's never going to think of it. White Tiger. That, that wow. wouldn't leap out at you? No. No. Uh, the writer, Tamora Pierce, is a writer of novels, so there's that going for it, right. too, when, when you advertise online. People that are searching for her as a writer. Writer but, didn't oh, know she, she did a, did a she did comic, comic book. book? Yeah, and exactly. I'm a if you're a diehard fan of hers, yep. you gotta have it. Sure, yeah. You gotta well, let me check it. out what this is. Right. Especially now you see her name and it says Marvel too. It's like, okay, yeah. I'm kind of interested. Uh, this is the first appearance of this white tiger. And uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I've been scooping up because I would think one time at one point in the future it might be popular. Right. You know how things go. They're always looking for strong female characters to, to put into right. movies. I don't know. Uh, 22 bucks for this one. Wow. And this sells uh, not every day, but it sells multiple times. Sure. Know, throughout the, the calendar year. That's, so. that's yeah, I would have never, never guessed. That's no. in my dollar bins. Okay. Well. I don't have one, I'm sure, because i pack my dollar bins because i'm pulling them out of the collections when i get them in mm-hmm. and i really go through a lot of dollar books. but this wouldn't leap out at you that would well, leap that would leap out to me but i wouldn't it would still go into my dollar bins but i mean i would remember if i because that's a great cover yes it is very striking one she's striking but the then the tiger behind well it's david mack too is yeah excellent artist yeah, yeah. Okay, third that's book. a big surprise. Third book. I bet that's a big surprise to everybody that's out there today. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think anybody that's watching today is like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write it down. But then again, it, it's it's what marketplace are you on too? Like you could probably find a bunch of these on eBay for cheaper. But yeah. there's other marketplaces like Hip Comic, Tomic Avenue, You Sell Comics. Like there's it's not just eBay. Right. eBay's not the only place to sell. It's the it's got the most eyes on it, and right. you're going to probably sell the books the but most. But you also have the eyes. most books. What did they say? What are the other uh, Dennis Berger, uh, I think, said, there, uh, or maybe it was Jesse James, said 30 million comics on, on eBay. So on eBay, if you go to comics category and you search just blank, yep. you know, the entire catalog, there's 11 million listings out 11 there. 11 right? million listings. Yep. That's crazy. That's a lot of listings. It's a lot. It's hard to... Get to when the you're top. starting out, it is really hard now to even get a sale to, or stand out right. on a platform that's that heavily populated. Yeah. It has to be a, a, like the hot book of the of the week. So, so the way I did it because everybody when I first started, it, is for I had to be the rock bottom cheapest price Perks. across everything, like just to make a sale. Yeah, which that's a long grind. <laughs> That's well, you know what is grind. you know what is up what has been very difficult for me and I I'm partly at fault for it, but I have sold a lot of stuff on eBay, but I only have maybe 1800 like people whether I'm good, bad or indifferent. Are your feedback me? My feedback. Gotcha. I do yeah. not get a feedback per per No, sale. no, no. Every sale doesn't necessarily lead to an automatic feedback. Right. And I think I'm, I probably am getting like one of the worst number returns. And I, one of the things I did with switch was, was that they get an automatic feedback. Anybody who feedbacks me gets an automatic feedback Mm -hmm. 
from me. Yep. So that has helped a little, and I've seen it notch up a little higher. But you know, I can I give you an inside scoop? Sure. You ready for this? If they don't leave feedback right away, and you have the auto feedback in place, maybe like the last month worth of sales, you just leave them a feedback. Say, hey, thanks a lot. I'd really appreciate a return feedback. You're requesting that of them. Right. They're going to notice that their feedback score went up. Right. You know, maybe they'll send you one back. Ah. Thank you. Yeah. I will try that. Give it a shot. It's not going to work all the time. But no, it, even but if it works 10% of the time, it's better than nothing. Right. If I could increase mine by 10 or 15%, it would make a huge it yeah. would make a huge difference. Yeah, give it a shot. I'm doing, you know, I mean, it's for me, I think it's a good number out of a small retail store with very little help. We're doing maybe 40 eBay sales a month. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably do that a day, or that's probably not even <laughs> half of what you do in a day. Or even we don't a third. Need to compare. We're trying to get the number, but we don't need to compare. <laughs> we're trying to use math to kind of trick them in and tell us how many how much he sells, but it's a lot. Um, yeah, no, so like, yeah, if I could get 15% more, if I could get five a month, I mean, that would increase mine a lot a year. Yeah, give it a shot. Yep. Next book. Uh, is a character that has been around for like 90 years. Okay. Has one of the coolest in the the 30s. arcade games from when I was young. Ooh. Um, has a movie from, I think, the 80s with Robin Williams. Oh, I should know that. And he really enjoys his vegetables. One specific one. Oh, it's oh, it's Popeye. It yeah. is Popeye. Oh, please don't be. Oh, I lie, Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but people are. I mean, I maybe people have just orders. been like fiending for Popeye comics yeah, because there, there, well, hasn't, there hasn't been, been one since forever. IDW. Yeah, but people are love it. Like it's so. It, it's not just like the IDW was more classic. I feel like. Yeah. This was a whole. This is like let's do this is their best, manga anime Popeye. This is their best selling comic ever, and it's from Emma's favorite publisher. Yeah, massive, aka whatnot. <laughs> but this book is doing very well. The free comic book day was massively popular. Uh, listen, I knew this. I really knew this was going to sell. I had put it, and which everybody, you got everybody who's been watching knows. I don't order more than five. You know, certain books through the year there there might be a couple of tens. Um, I had ordered 20 until I realized it was you on did? massive. Until I realized it was on massive and I put it you back get, to you zero. You gotta get over this hangout, man. I, I can't. My integrity's not for sale. Harriet Tubman was on massive. I know. This was Popeye's a bigger, this was a bigger sale. The Harriet Tubman yeah. was, was, was a surprise. Yes. Th this was not a surprise. I knew this was gonna be a hit. Yep. I, I knew it was gonna be a hit, but I wasn't gonna participate. I wasn't gonna give him my money. Well, I gave him some. Yeah, uh, that's all. Fifteen. And I'm not against for, anybody giving them their one. money. I really am not against anybody, but I just have such a problem with them. I can't. I can't do it. I got you. This is going for fifteen. Um, I'm trying to hold copies How many because different? I want to make. And this is just a cup. Yeah, I, I want to make sets. Right. I think it's it's got to be a limited series. I want to make sets because I think they'll do pretty well. Yeah. Because there's Popeye fans out there. Same thing. They're not coming to local comic shops every day. I have three guys that come in and get, but they don't want Popeye comics. They're looking for Popeye memorabilia. Memorabilia. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. And I'm sure I could could have I could have hand sold them. They, uh, maybe. It's the art style is very not Popeye. Might be unappealing for some Older classic guys, yeah. Popeye's fans, but mostly the olive. Uh, you know, he's pretty close, except for when you get around his mid. Like they made him very, very like. She is, looks like Astro Boy. Boy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she even has this boy. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, you know, it's doing well. Yeah, people like it. Okay, the next one is written by a lead singer of a band. Oh, that's, is it Jared? It is. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Okay. He just had a new book. He Grom, did have a new it's book. It's Gromits. It's Gromits. Not Gromits. That's Rick Remender. That's Rick Remender. What am I talking we'll about? That's about Posen that. and Rick Remender. Yeah. Um, Has a die cut cover. Yeah. Oh, my God. I cannot remember the name it's of called it. called Paranoid yeah. Gardens. Yeah. Now, I also really appreciate this. This is direct from Dark Horse. They know that a die cut cover is susceptible to major damage damage and they put and it they in the bag. nicely protected it for us yes. which is very rare for a publisher to be that forward thinking I, for their product i bought five of these gone already right gone yeah yeah um i had a subscriber so i had originally done three and then somebody said hey if you're getting that in i'll take it so then i was like oh two subscribers i don't everybody knows i don't have a lot of subscribers 
that's a lot. Percentage wise, that's a lot. I'm like, oh. So then I put up to five and they're gone. It's kind of a, it's kind of a good uh, barometer for you, I would think. Yeah. If a lot of people out of the blue are like, hey, add this to my poll list. Yeah. You're like, wait a second, this is an indie book and people want it? Okay, yeah. let me up my orders on yeah. it. So again, written by the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. You probably know him best because he's the creator of... Umbrella Academy. Umbrella Academy, yep. Um, so Had his own imprint at DC. Which, yeah, Young Ammo. Yep. Which I don't know if he quit on it or DC quit on him. I'd like to hear the story of that because know. it was good and I just think it needed time, right? It needed time. So, you know, this is one of those things where people just bank on the creator, I think, and... Also, Chris Weston's art is really good. I yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but... I did go through it before I sold my it's last really, one. It's really good artwork. <coughs> Not super flashy, but, like, really functional, really nice looking. All right, next one up. Um, okay, this one's really expensive. Really expensive. Really expensive. It's also Modern? Uh, a character we've probably featured more times than any other character Spider-Man? Um, yeah, on this type of show, yeah. Modern? A modern book. And there's a movie in the works with the person who stole the name, his acting name, from Luke Cage. Oh, this is Spider-Man Noir. It is, yeah. yeah. First appearance. Yeah, I sold Take my last one. Take a stab at the price that this sold for free, well, if shipping included. Okay, so I just sold one. Uh, a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, and I got 300 for mine. Mm, good. Yeah. I would say this is now six bills. No, that's that's crazy. That would be amazing. But yeah. at 352, 99. 352. All right. Yeah. That's great. 300 was good. In yeah. Store, in store. Yeah. In yeah. store. Yeah. That's great. Speculator's got to be. I mean, he ever since Spider Verse came out, he was popular, and this book was an expensive right. book. But now there's going to be a live movie, action. Yeah. 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 But it might go higher. You might be right because the movie's pretty far out. We don't. We're not even getting trailers for it yet. I don't think they've. Have they filmed any of it? Yet? I saw a still shot from it oh, very yeah. recently. Yeah. So we got a long way to go. Is They're going to start good? putting. They didn't you never really can costume. tell because the lighting where they take the still photo, the lighting always sucks. I, I don't think they even show the costume. It was just oh, okay. him. But um, the media machines just start kicking in. Advertisements everywhere. You know, yeah. it, it's it could, it has room. Yep. And then this is the bonus book. All right. Not, it's only a single. It looks not like selling a, for crazy money. Is it a magazine? It's not a magazine, but it's taller than a regular. Uh, You're never going to guess what it is, so I'm just going to show it to you. It's distillery? No. I, I don't buy distillery books. They're, they're my whatnot for you. <laughs> Listen, I'm not happy. With, I'm actually going to do a video on distillery. I thought you wanted to be a comic. That, I'm going to call it. I thought you wanted to be a comic book company. Yeah, I'm not. I, I can't justify the price point. Um, the price point. The, the size. There's no bags. There's no boards for it. There's no boxes for yeah. it. Um, Look, we're making comics. We don't need to change up the format. Right. You can make it yeah. thicker, but if you make it taller or wider, like we have no. Place yeah, to I wasn't store happy with the, the tiny, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which sold yeah, really well, but still, annoying. I. It was really annoying that last Ronin that they were yep. so tall. It yep. was so annoying. So I don't know what happened, but I sold 13 of these in the past week. You're not going to guess it. It's, it's not Mad Magazine? No, 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 no. No. Yeah, that's the face I was looking for. <laughs> huh? How do you even have it? I, I, well, all right, so <laughs> uh, I bought a, a closeout of a, of a subscription-based trade company called Comic oh. Bento. So every yeah, month you yeah. would get like five trades. They were out of Canada. They did yeah, yeah. just trades. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And when they went out, I bought the remaining stock. So I have like uh, hundreds of these. And then I don't know what is happening. Someone, they're not selling for crazy money either. Right. It's like nine dollars. Right. But like, but, they're, but for thirteen to sell in the week, that's that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. A lot. I have no explanation for you. I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know what happened. <laughs> yep. Habitat. Simon Roy. You might know him from like the follow-up to Brandon Graham's Prophet, or maybe Glory, one of those two. Not a huge name, just a sci-fi book. Annoyingly, not the same size as a comic. You know, a little bit taller. Yeah. But and it's wider bound, it's it sits yeah. under shelf. I don't know. That's it. Well who was the, who were they printed on though? Like how Image. There, that's an image book. Yeah. Okay. But it, it, it this and this is a just in their a trade graphic division. novel. This yeah. is not a graphic novel. Yeah. It's never been in floppy print. No, it's an original graphic novel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why it just did. 
you know, that's a really great business for them that a lot of people do not really know about. What's that? Is that the that graphic novel image? Oh, they they in the book market they make such good bank. Yeah, yeah. because usually image. Image doesn't get anything from the floppies, but they usually get forty percent from the trades. Okay. So. So they're making them. Good imagine percentage. how much money they made on Walking Dead. Oh yeah, because that <laughs> sold a lot to trades. Millions and yeah. millions. All right, so that's my hot list for, All right. for the week. Um, More information. We're gonna keep up with reading comics because that's yeah. what we really like. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna give this one. This was a shot. This is my suggestion this time. Yep. Um, from previous video, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, I'm choosing it because I like the writer. I have not read it. I'm assuming you probably have not read it yet. I definitely have not read that. This... See the little kids' faces on there? I wouldn't pick that book <gasps> up. Uh, it's just what an ageist. Yeah. So this is from Sean McKeever, who wrote this. No, oh, it's not up there. It was oh, in the previous it video. It was in the previous video. Yeah, yeah, a series that I really enjoyed called Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane. Jerry, yeah. My, my daughter enjoys reading it, too. The writer's really good with dialogue. So that's what I'm expecting out of this book is just... I di- love, I just love good dialogists, man. I, you can't... I mean... I don't... I love them. It I looks don't like know it could what's be happening. Sci-fi. It might be sci-fi-ish. I don't know. Because there's like a UFO... I'm that, only recommending it because McKeever did it. Did Sean it. McKeever. Yeah. I All mean, right. that. I, that's what I want this series to be is reading stuff. I like, it'd be easiest for us to just grab a Spider-Man issue or... You know, and we may at some point have a Spider-Man issue, but probably not from the regular Amazing Spider-Man run. The and new stuff with Tombstone looks really cool, by the it way. It does. Yeah. It does. It maybe maybe it's going to be something like that, something new, because you don't read a lot of new, right? No. And I'll I don't read it when a, it's done. I don't get a chance to read a lot of new, and I love old. So I'm usually, if I'm doing it for pleasure myself, I am reading old book. Um, but. I'm reading new books for business. Let me ask you a question. Sure. When you say old book, is it old? Is it always the same old time period? Or is it like, I'll, if it's 10 years old or older, I'll read it? Like, is it a sliding time scale? Or you're like, I'm only reading if it's from the 90s. I'm only reading if it's from the 80s. Uh, it, it, I would have to admit, to be honest, that it's mostly probably going to be the 80s. But I do enjoy a lot of that stuff when nobody was collecting in that 99 to 2004 they're so hard to find, though. Yeah. Comics took another jump, I think, in that time yeah. towards maturity almost, like yep. to telling stories that we would appreciate. Yep. Um, getting out of the 90s era, yep. I feel like, and that's kind of what that's that growth period. They did lose a lot of subscribers, so the, the print runs are pretty low. But yeah, there's some fun stuff in there. Yeah. That, that's and, a- and that's also where Image started to do a lot of more vertigo type storylines so right. like the stuff on image from then on is like really good storytelling and not just flashy art i've big read it's big guns cyber this yeah yeah i probably have read all of the vertigo stuff where i would say oh i would read vertigo um that era but i've probably already read it all i might reread like transmetropolitan because i kind of don't remember it i remember i loved it but mm-hmm. i can't really remember it when you read a lot of comics, it, it gets tough to remember it, all. It of gets them. tough. Yep. It gets tough, and like my brain doesn't work on like specifics, like where people's first appearance. Like I told you, my wall now, all my books on my wall. On the back, I'm writing <laughs> what's Gotta what they notes. are. Gotta I have, have to have notes because I can't remember. It's just too much. Well, take notes for this one so we can talk about it. I will. And at will. home, you're welcome to join us. Yep. Outpost, Outpost zero, zero, number one. All right. And you know what to do. Keep reading comics. <laughs>